and I will share my screen. Okay, can someone confirm me that you can hear me and you can see the slides? Yeah, looks good. I can see it. Okay, good. Thanks. Okay, so, uh, hey, thanks for uh, taking your time and joining the Blue Jeans today. Um, uh, so today, the, the triple or deep dive is about uh, puppet things. So, um, well, we started the Tripolo deep dive so people can understand how Tripolo works under the hood. And I thought that it would be useful to uh, uh, to explain a little bit how uh, Tripolo is using the Puppet modules and why we are using that, how it works under the hood. Uh, so today, this is about uh, explaining uh, the, the Puppet things in Tripolo. If you have any question, uh, just enable your mic and 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 go ahead. Um, so just to make sure uh, anyone knows me, uh, my name is uh, Emilien. I work in the engineering team for Red Hat. Uh, I, I've been working on deployments for a while now, and uh, I'm currently leading the Puppet OpenStack modules. I'm uh, I'm the PTL, and uh, yeah, I, I'm working on Puppet things for quite a while now. So if you have any question about Puppet in the future, you can ping me on IRC and uh, I, I, I will help you. Um, I'm also working uh, on Tripolo and, and trying to make the Tripolo deployment faster with Puppet modules and, uh, and that's it. Okay, uh, so let's start by the agenda. Um, so yeah, I, I will start by an introduction uh, just to make sure that everyone uh, is on the same page about the Puppet OpenStack modules, uh, what we are doing here and what is the, uh, how do we work, etc. Because I guess in the future, or if not already, you will contribute to the Puppet modules maybe, uh, maybe because you want to fix a bug or you want to add a new service or something. Um, the second thing we will uh, we will see together um, how how the services are running. Um, sorry, I, I I forgot to change the slide. Um, we will see together how the services are deployed with Puppet Tripolo. So we are using Puppet profiles. Uh, I will go into uh, details about this. Um, the third topic will be about how do we uh, uh, use the Puppet profiles in the heat templates, so you will understand how Tripolo is uh, is going to to be uh, uh, composable, and you will you will be able to to choose what service what services you want to run on on which container or, or which node, uh, depending of your architecture, um, and uh, we will we will have a, a short conclusion about how you can bring your own service in Tripolo. So let's say you want to bring a, a new a Neutron service. How can you do it? So I will try to explain you how to how to make it. And uh, we have some time for questions uh, at the end if you have. But if you have any questions during the presentation, please just go ahead and, and shoot. OK, um, so let's make an introduction about the Puppet modules. Um, so the mission statement is actually very straightforward. We try to bring scalable and reliable IT mode uh, automation to OpenStack cloud deployments. So what it means is that um, we have a we have a lot of Puppet modules, uh, actually 36 Puppet modules to deploy almost all the OpenStack projects. So we have modules for Nova, Keystone, but we have also modules for uh, some project like Watcher or Octavia or some 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 project that maybe you don't know. So this is a Big Ten project which is uh, uh, supported by the OpenStack community. Um, we are following the same cycle uh, release model uh, as Tripolo. Uh, which is also the same as the other projects in OpenStack. We make a release every six months for the new uh, for the new OpenStack release. Um, we have a 
we have a huge continuous integration testing. We are testing a lot of things. And uh, the exciting things that we, we are testing are the actual triple O jobs. Uh, so we are running multi-node testing on top of the Puppet modules. Um, so if you're submitting a patch in Puppet Nova, we will actually deploy some nodes and test that you can deploy Nova and configure it and, and Nova is actually working. Um, the, the, the thing is that we are using the RDO trunk on master. So we are, every day we are testing, uh, puppet modules against, uh, OpenStack master. Um, we are working very closely with the, uh, the puppet community and uh, the modules that are working with the official puppet labs module. So for example, in Tripolo, you will see that we are deploying Apache. Uh, so the Puppet OpenStack modules actually work with these modules uh, uh, supported by Puppet Labs. We did not fork our own modules and we did not create uh, everything. We just uh, use what the Puppet community is using and what Puppet Labs is actually supporting. Um, if you want to know more about Puppet OpenStack module, uh, there is a link. Uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, you can you can see the slide after the after this presentation. I put the link on the other part, so if you want to to just click on the link later, you, you can find the official documentation about all of this. Uh, so, who who are using the modules? A lot of people actually uh, are using the, the Puppet modules, of course, Tripolo, uh, but also uh, um, some 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 people uh, deploying OpenStack in production for public clouds, for private clouds, and some installers like Tripolo and Fuel from Myrantis. So this is a lot of use cases and and quite a diverse community uh, based on operators feedback. So. We are building the Puppet modules from operators' feedback, uh, which is good for us. We are uh, actually uh, um, we are actually working closely with the operator community. Um, so if you if you look at the composition of a Puppet module, what does it look like? Uh, if you take, for example, Puppet Nova, and you 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 list the the the, repo, the the directories and the files. You are wondering what are the lib directories. So the lib is containing the the resource types. For example, uh, the Puppet modules have some providers to create some resources. It can be a glance image or it can be a Keystone user or Keystone endpoints. So we have a bunch of uh, of resources that we are managing with Puppet. Uh, and uh, yeah, they are living in the lib uh, directory. Uh, but the most important thing are the actual manifests, which are doing all the configuration and orchestration for us. If you look at the manifest, you, you will most of the case find the, the same structure every time. Uh, you have a init.pp file, which is the standard class for the common bits. Uh, if the service has an API like Nova, for example, you will find all the bits to deploy the Nova API in this class um, and, 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 and so on. So yeah, you have basically uh, all, all the bits that you can, uh, you can use to, to, to configure your service. And you will see that uh, everything is split uh, across different sections, which are uh, uh actual class in puppet so if if you want to configure keystone uh you will i think you will find a, a class for keystone in the module that will configure all the the bits that you need for for running the the service uh you have a, a file which calls params.pp it contains all the packages name and service names because they are different on specific distros like ubuntu and red hat so it it depends on which distro you're running and 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 yeah you can find it here so if you if you want to have like a new service uh you have to make sure that 
this service is, uh, you can deploy it on Red Hat, but also on Ubuntu. And uh, that's something you can see in this file. And yeah, uh, like I said, you also discover other classes because each module has specificities like Nova and like uh, Neutron and so on. And finally, there is a, a spec directory. Uh, it contains the unit and functional tests. And yeah, that's it. Most of the most of the case when you have to patch puppet modules, you have to update the test. It's usually it's very straightforward, but it's happening in this directory. Uh, if you look at the link I put before, uh, you have everything you need about uh, the test if you want to learn about how to write tests. But we are not going to cover it in this presentation. Okay, so like I said before. Maybe you already did, or maybe you are going to, but uh, it's probably you are going to do uh, your first contribution in Puppet OpenStack. Uh, this slide is just to make sure that you understand how uh, we like to to uh, to write the Puppet module. So obviously, uh, you have to document all the new parameters. If you want, for example, to create a, a new parameters for Nova, uh, because something uh, has been implemented in uh, in the last cycle, you want to add it in the Puppet Nova module. You need to add some documentation. Uh, if you are if you are dropping a, a parameter, you need to deprecate it correctly with a Puppet warning, and uh, and you have to support the parameter uh, at least one cycle. Um, I, I won't go in in details for this because if you look at the code in in all the Puppet modules. You can already look the deprecations. They are very, very easy to read, and uh, and that's it's just very important to take care of it when you write uh, your patch. Um, if you're creating a new parameter, you have to set the value to OS service default because that that's a puppet thing that we created. So we just don't configure it by default, and we rely on the OpenStack defaults. Uh, that's something we introduced in the Mitaka cycle, and you can now use it. Um, of course, if you create a new parameter or a new class or even a new module, you need to obviously create the unit test and the functional test, because, like I said before, we are investing we are uh, investing a lot in the CI, and we want a good coverage of testing. So yeah. Uh, we have some coding style, which is documented in the website I gave you before. Uh, not everything is documented, but most of the bits, uh, and it's good to follow them. And of course, uh, your patch has to, pa to pass the CI jobs, because if it works for Triple if it works for Fuel, if it works for the integration jobs that we have, uh, there is a, a good chance that your patch uh, will be good to go. Okay, what is a bad contribution now? But obviously, no documentation, no tests. Uh, something I can see most of the time is that people try to set a default value to uh, an opinionated value. Like, uh, for example, if you create a parameter in Nova and you set the default value to, I don't know, false, but the default in Nova is true, uh, that's something we just don't want because the, it's, uh, it means that you have an opinion of the value which is different from upstream, and we just won't uh, do it. So you have to use uh, the service default, at least. That, that's something that we just mentioned before. Uh, obviously, uh, don't break backward compatibility. Like I said, we have some operators running the modules in production, and uh, yeah, we, we try to not break them at every uh, release. Um, if you're not following the Puppet standards, if you're trying to do some crazy things with Puppet, uh, Puppet is not a bus script. You have to respect some uh, code syntax. Uh, if you want to learn about Puppet itself, you can you can go ahead with the official documentation. I'm not going to cover it here, but we still have some conventions like you have in Python and other projects. So yeah, just yeah, sometimes if you get minus one because someone tell you, hey, no, this is not how we can do it in Puppet. So yeah, you can you can understand it because Puppet have some standards too. Um, and obviously, yeah, don't break CI. Just don't do that. <laughs>
Okay, do you have any questions so far? I think we are uh, good in the timing. Okay, um, let's go to the next chapter. So um, how do we do a puppet profile? What are puppet profiles in Trupolo? So the user story uh, in the, that we had in the past, uh, before implementing the profile, we were getting the feedback from the field. And as a deployer, I would like each service containerized and or isolated from other services, which means that uh, I want some I want some tooling which enable me to deploy Nova API uh, separated from Nova Conductor, for example. So before that, uh, be, before before the before this work that we did in this cycle in Trupolo, we could not do it because everything was um, all the services were uh, composed together on a controller role, and same for compute and storage. So we had this uh, monolithic manifest uh, in Trupolo that we uh that we uh stopped to to maintain in in the newton cycle uh i, I will uh, i will give some details after um so the idea was to be able to um to isolate uh to isolate the services each other so yeah like i said we had this monolithic manifest that you can find in before uh before uh in mitaka and before in liberty and so on so you have this controller manifest that contains all the bits for deploying a controller, but it was too opinionated for people on the field. They wanted to choose and select what they want to deploy on which node. Uh, and also the controller became a, 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 button, a, a bottleneck uh, because yeah, we had too many services on the controller and some performance issues and, and so on. And uh, and yeah, basically we we had a huge technical debt in the in the in the manifest because we were wrongly using puppet modules. We were hard coding the classes definitions into this manifest, and it was just not good for us, not flex, not flexible, and, and so on. So we created the the triple O puppet profiles. So what are the profiles? Um, you have to think about uh, think containers where you want one service per container. In the triple O profile, it's mostly the same. You want one service uh, is one profile. So, for example, you would you would have uh, a profile for Nova API, one profile for Apache, one profile for NTP, and so on. Uh, the service logic goes in the Puppet OpenStack modules. That means that if you want to deploy a Nova API, the, all the configuration bits goes in the Puppet Nova module, but the Triple O specific logic goes in Puppet Triple O. So, for example, uh, we will just uh, look at the code after after this slide. Um, for example, we have some profiles in in Triple O. Which call uh, triple O profile base hit API or pacemaker Apache. We will see afterwards uh, how how it works. And uh, and we have some yeah we have some roles that will include later the puppet classes needed to to, to deploy a specific service. So we will see uh, afterwards what are the roles and how do how does it work. Uh, there is one thing which is very important to understand here is that we are using Puppet to do the configuration and the orchestration, and we are using a stepwise deployment. So we did that before already, and we will continue to do it during the next release. Um, so what is a stepwise deployment? Um, it's actually a step-by-step -step deployment where we uh, build uh, our Triple O cloud uh, step by step. So, for example, at step one, we are building, we are bootstrapping the cluster with pacemaker, HAProxy, Keeper IVD. Uh, we are building the database with a MySQL Galera, and we are building RabbitMQ cluster. At at step two, we are validating the cluster. We 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 start to create the safe cluster, 
uh, we create the, the, the Swift uh, ring. And as step three, we know that the cluster is ready, the database are ready. So we create the OpenStack database and we run the DB sync. Uh, at step four, we, we configure the OpenStack services, we configure uh, uh, Apache and we start the services that are not managed by Pacemaker. And at step five, the last step, we start uh, all the services managed by Pacemaker. So this is like uh, this is like an iterative deployment. So we can fail fast if something's wrong during a step. Uh, I'm not going to give much details in there, but uh, that's something we would like to continue doing in the in the future. We are currently investigating how to do a, a step validation, uh, so you can uh, you can actually understand why your step is failing. For example, if uh, a step uh, at the step number uh, three, the OpenStack database creation is not working. It's not created. You want to fail immediately and you want to know why. So we are working on this. There is a public discussion on the mailing list. Um, but yeah, that's something uh, you needed to know about Puppet deployments. We are doing stepwise deployments. So I'm going to show you an example of the of a Puppet profile. So let's take the example with Nova API. So this is an example of code which is uh, in a Puppet triple O module. You can find it. Um, so if you look uh, from the top, uh, we have some parameters. They are given uh, with Hira, and uh, and also they are given when you call the profile directly from another class. So that's a uh, that's something that people who know Puppet, they, they know how the parameters work. Um, they, they, there is some logic in this manifest because uh, Nova API uh, was running uh, with Pacemaker. Uh, so we wanted to, to run the DB sync only on the Pacemaker uh, master. So if you, if you look at the second thing, we have, uh, we have some logic to run the, you know, the, the DB sync only on the master node. Uh, most of the services have a common class for the common bits shared across multiple services in the same project. For example, Nova API and Nova Conductor, they share a common class in Puppet module, which is the, 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 the Nova class. Uh, so basically, uh, you, need, you need this class in all the profiles. So we are doing basic, uh, basic Puppet profiles here, and we are trying to include the class uh, as we can uh, and try to define the parameters with Hira. Um, you can see in the manifest the stepwise deployment, which is driven by heat. So you can see the steps if uh, step four or step uh, three and DB sync. OK, let's create, the, let's create the database and so on. And uh, and yeah, you can see the pure Puppet OpenStack classes. If you look at the include, you can you can notice that we are calling the, the pure Puppet Nova. We are not calling uh, another class to configure uh, uh, Nova Nova Net Nova uh, the the cron tab or the Nova API service and so on. Um, Okay, do you have any questions so far about the profiles? Okay, let's go ahead with uh, uh, how how do we write the composability with heat? Um, so as a deployer, I would like to choose what services to deploy on which physical or virtual server or container. So like I said before, uh, a big limitation of Triple O in the past was you could not choose exactly what service you want to run on your controller, on your compute node. You had to, you had to use the manifest that, that are in the current Triple O hit templates. And uh, basically everybody was struggling about this because they wanted to add some services and we could not have more services on the controller. So um, also, we have some specific architecture, for example, uh, NAV or some architecture with some specific services like the uh, hyper converged Ceph uh, when you want Ceph running on the compute node, etc. So 
everybody had a different use case and we wanted to cover it. So uh, this, is, this, uh, this section is, is about to, to explain how it works. So how does it work, the composability? Um, basically, you want to create a service. Uh, so that's what, we, uh, that's what we did just before with the Puppet Triple O profile. So we already covered it, uh, but we are going to explain uh, how it works on the hit side. Um, you also want to register the service and all the services that you that we, that you will have in your deployment. And at the end, you want to create the custom roles uh, before uh, running the deployments. Okay, so let's see how it works uh, piece by piece. Um, okay, here's an example again with Nova API. So this is a this is a triple O service that you can find in the triple O hit templates repository. Uh, if you are not familiar with it, uh, that's one of the biggest repositories that we are doing in, in Tripolo. Uh, you can find all the, the, the templates where we create the different services that we want to deploy. So this one is about Nova API. You can, uh, you can look, we have a hit template header. So this is a regular hit template. Uh, of course, we have the description mentioning that that's an OpenStack Nova API service. Uh, we have some parameters, uh, like uh, we have the Nova workers parameters, for example. Uh, uh, we will see later that how uh, that it used to configure Nova API. Uh, we have also uh, uh, the the Nova base profile resource, which is included in Nova API. Uh, like I said before, uh, the Nova services share some common bits. Sometimes, well, not sometimes, but in Nova, it's the case. And for most of the services, it's also the case. They have a base profile for the for the common things. And uh, uh, this resource is, is, about, is about it. And uh, at the end, we have the mapping between Hira parameters uh, to configure uh, the service. So uh, Hira parameters, it's a, it's a key value thing where you can configure the parameters in the Puppet modules. For example, if you go in the Puppet Nova module, if you look at the API class, you will see a parameter which is called uh, metadata workers. And uh, we are configuring these parameters here in the service, in the hit template. And we are using the standard Hira. Um, so if you want to override the Nova workers, you will have to, uh, in your deployment, you will have to uh, to change the value of Nova workers parameter. And uh, at the end, you can see the, the step config, which is including the, the Puppet profile. Uh, here we are including the, the, the triple O profile base, base, sorry, Nova API. So, we are just calling what we did before, the Triple O profile in Puppet Triple O. We are including it here to, uh, to deploy Nova API. And this hit template is about the composition between the Puppet profile, the Hira data, uh, the, 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 including the, the resources that we have uh, in common with the other services, and the parameters. So that's that's about it. Okay. Once you once you you did the, the the service, you need to register the service. So for all the services that you you created, you need to register them in in the in the in the resource registry in the, in this YAML file. So right now it's in this file. If you want to to look at the current state of the file, you can open it. And you will see that there is a Nova API service. And at the end, you want to create uh, you want to create some roles. Before we had the controller, we had compute roles. And uh, if you want to create your own controller, you will have to register uh, the the service to the role. So that's something that we are still uh, developing. Uh, Stephen Hardy is actually developing it. Uh, I'm not sure he's here in this call, uh, but uh, basically uh, this is still under development. 
uh, I gave a, a quick overview in this uh, in this slide. So if you want to well to look how it's going to to look like, uh, that's uh, that's a quick overview. Uh, this is not definitive right now because, like I said, it's still working progress. But it will basically allow you to uh, compose yourself your uh, different roles. So like we had before, controller, compute, uh, and you can call it how you want. And uh, we will have a, a dynamic template by using uh, Jinja. And um, we will just uh, iterate over all the roles and we will include the services that you want for each role. It's just about composability here. And uh, and that's it. So how how can you? Uh, then I forgot to change the slide. I'm sorry. Um, okay. So do you have any questions so far about the composability here? Uh, if you have any, uh, if you want me to go in in details on something specific, please ask me now. Uh, there is one thing to understand about that. It's that the last piece, which is uh, the current slide, the custom roles, is still under development. Uh, and uh, I hope uh, we can we can finish it by the end of Newton. Uh, Steve and, and, and the group, is, uh, we are working on it. Uh, but basically, it will just, uh, it, 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 it will look like, uh, how, how is it in the slide? So. Okay, if you don't have questions now, I will go ahead. Uh, so the the next slide, it's a, it's a bit a conclusion about how you can bring your own service in Shupolo. Uh, so the first the first step is to uh, make sure. So it's an example with Barbican. Let's say you want to to add a, a Barbican in in Shupolo, um which is the case uh, some people want it but it's not yet integrated so you need to make sure that you prepare the uh, openstack puppet module for puppet barbican uh, you need to make sure that all the configuration that you need is in the puppet barbican uh, because the configuration won't be done in in the puppet profile in Shupolo. like i said before the configuration and the orchestration is done in the Puppet Barbican module. So you have to make sure that it does everything you need. Um, and then when you're done with the, the module, you can go ahead in Puppet Triplo and create the profile. So in the case of Barbican, there is one service, so you need one profile to run the, the API service. Uh, and basically just include uh, the, the Barbican classes that you need uh, at the step of, of the deployments. Um, and then when you're done with the profile, you can go ahead with the composable service in Triple Hit templates. So uh, like I showed uh, with the example in Nova API, you can create a new service for Barbican that will set uh, all the Hira data that you want to configure the service and uh, to include also the Puppet profile for Barbican and all the parameters that you want, like the workers or the database or keystone credentials and, and etc. And when you're done, you can register the service by uh, adding the, the new service to the registry. And, and then at the end, you can assign the service to one or multiple roles. So that's the last piece is still something that we are uh, doing right now. Uh, and, uh, and we will create some like a dynamic, uh, dynamic uh, iteration for creating uh, the, the customized roles. And at the end, you can keep calm and deploy triple at, at wish. Okay, 35 minutes. We have uh, 10 minutes for questions. Uh, please uh, go ahead if uh, you want me to go in details on something specific. And um, if I was not clear on something, just enable your mic and, and raise your questions. 
I don't uh, I don't see the blue jeans questions. I don't I, I can't read it at, at this time. So uh, if someone wants to ask me, go ahead, please. Uh, Emilian Michele here. I have a question. Um, yeah. Is, is there a way to to um, to specify kind of constraints between the composable services? Like these two services must be together. These two must not. That kind of stuff. Right. Uh, that's a very good question, and uh, I think uh, we are going to address this thing uh, in this in this cycle. Uh, right now, Steve, Steve, Steven is working on the on the Jinja thing to iterate on the core. Is that a realistic problem? Is there ever a case where we want to force two services to be together? Um, well, r right now, how we do is that we include the services like I said, for example, Nova API is is requiring is requiring the the Nova base, so we are just uh, including the the service uh, in the service itself. So we are doing this constraint right now because you have to. But in the case of let's say you want Keystone, but even which, that should not be a requirement. Those are those are that's an optimization, right? Keystone should not actually. I, I was going to ask about that. Keystone should be on its own node and not coupled with any, anything else in, in HTTPD like this. But it looks like the direction that you're going is that we want to be able to put everything in its own container. And I could see that in, including all the internal pieces of, of Nova. So I can't see where we'd ever want to force them together. Right now, there is no restriction. It was, it was more, more a way to, um, to describe constraints. I think at the moment, we're, we're not likely to do anything of this nature for Newton. Um, but I raised a heat spec a while ago, which was about template capabilities. And it's more about saying, hey, if you want to enable Nova API, then you need to include all of your other Nova services. Um, and then they depend on the database, and et cetera, et cetera. And by the way, it depends on Rabbit. At the moment, the operator it has to know about all of those dependencies and exp explicitly specify the list. In future, it might be nice if you could have that um, relationship defined in the templates, but um, that um, capability doesn't exist um, in our model at the moment. There, there are some cases okay, cool. in Neutron, Neutron where that kind of thing is useful because OBS is like an L2 agent is required pretty much anywhere that you're actually going to do anything okay. uh, with Neutron. So that would be one of those situations where it'd be cool to have that just say, Need an L3 agent and everything comes with it, um, and so on. So, thanks, Amelia. Thanks, Steve. Okay, uh, if you have more questions, or if you want me to go in depth for in details for something, I was maybe too short or too quick for you. Please go ahead. Um, Amelia, one thing which I would find helpful is if you could maybe share a terminal and talk through um, the test tools that are used to test the Puppet modules, because when I first started hacking on them, I wasn't familiar with um, the way the, the unit tests were wired in. Um, I don't know if, if that would be something other people would find useful just to spend a couple of minutes on. That'd be awesome, right. at least for me as well. <laughs> okay, uh, so yeah, uh, the test, so we have uh, we have two uh, well, we have basically two two kind of tests. We have the unit test and the functional test. Uh, the unit test they are done with the uh, RSpec framework. Uh, so there is a, a bunch of documentation uh, online about this. It's basically testing that uh, it's 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 basically testing what you expect the puppet manifest to do. Like if you expect to configure this resource with this parameter. The RSpec test will just test that uh, your expectation is good and it's actually working. Um, there is this is this is more about this thing and and you have also unit test for the providers, which is a bit more complex because it's uh, it's more in in uh, Ruby and it's uh, basically a unit test in Ruby. It just uh, instantiate instantiate the uh, the resource and and so on. So that's that's a bit more complex. I I'm not sure we'll have to do it one day. Um, but the, the thing is that about functional testing, 
uh, we are using uh, the standard Puppet Beaker, which is a, another framework for functional testing in, in Puppet. Uh, basically, there is, uh, there is nothing much to know about this because the framework is just about uh, you declare the new class in the test and Puppet Beaker will just in instantiate the class and see if the, the catalog is not failing. Uh, it's using the server spec framework to do the actual validation. Like if you want to test if the service is running or if uh, if the service is listening on a specific port, we can check that in Beaker. What you need to know is actually the, the Puppet OpenStack integration thing that we have. Uh, everything is documented on GitHub uh, and uh, I can put you the link on the on the slide later. Um, it's basically a set of uh, four scenarios that we use to deploy OpenStack. Uh, for example, we have the first scenario that deploys Ceph and telemetry, and we will test if uh, what happens if uh, new key and Nova Cinder Glance are configured to use the RBD backend. Uh, and so this is a bunch of integration things. We have four scenarios to cover uh, uh, a maximum of services because, like I said, we have 36 modules. It's very hard to test everything in one CI job. So we had to split in four jobs. You don't have to know anything about new framework. It's just a repository to use. Like if you're creating, for example, a new service in, for example, a, a, a brand is working on Octavia today. And uh, if tomorrow the module is, 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 uh, is, is supposed to work, Brent can, can go ahead and in Puppet OpenStack integration, create the, the Octavia manifest to deploy Octavia, and uh, it will run Tempest, and, uh, and that will be part of the integration testing. You can have integrations uh, with, uh, with these projects. And, and yeah, so if you, if you go back in the slide uh, about the Puppet OpenStack, there is a link at the end, the only one link actually, if you, if you click on this, uh, this is the official Puppet OpenStack uh, web page. And uh, there is a section about CI. And, and if you go here, you can, you can go and learn how uh, the CI is, is working, uh, how you can learn to write testing and so on. But basically, yeah, if you want me to cover AirSpec, we can spend all the day on this one if you want. <laughs> Okay, there yeah, is a question. That, that was a yeah. useful over here. Okay. Yeah, I have one yes, question. So, uh, yeah. First, first uh, point was that the uh, the the slide the images are not loading. So I, I that's a small thing, but uh, I think there's a permission issue. The other question is that let's say if we have this requirement. Uh, that um, we need to have the database on a SF uh, volume. Is that possible? Or and if it is possible, how does how does a operator make make sure that's uh, implemented? Let's say because what I'm trying to say is, um, is there some kind of dependency criteria we, which we can build into the triple O with the puppet modules by by the operator himself? Um, so the question is, if I understand correctly, is is there some mechanism to validate that the parameters are set if you are deploying Cinder with Ceph? Yeah. Basically, if you don't, the deployment will just fail because the, well, I guess we are providing some default values for some parameters, but if we don't, the the, the the deployment will just fail because the Puppet Cinder actually requires the parameters. So if you don't provide, for example, the RBD key, um, if you don't provide it, which is a required parameter, uh, the deployment will just fail already because it will no, say, hey, no, I, I think I, I should rephrase it. So basically when you're saying the step one, step two, step, step three, step one is where yeah. you are installing the database and step uh, somewhere in the step two, I think, or in the step one later, you're installing the Ceph. Let's say I, I want to have the database uh, itself reside in the Ceph volume. Can I make that uh, call as an operator? 
or try to do that? Um, I'm not sure. I get it. If someone can help me. Uh, uh, yeah. What I'm saying is the Ceph, uh, Ceph uh, volume is created later to database. But when, when I'm creating the database itself, it should write to oh, a Ceph okay. volume. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so the, the, the table I gave in the slide about the, the stepwise deployment was an example. It's not something that is fixed right now. Uh, maybe tomorrow some, some services will change, which it was just an overview of why we are doing stepwise deployments. It was not like a, you know, like a, it was not like a documentation of how it works like right now. It's just an overview of why we are doing stepwise deployments. And uh, maybe Ceph will be at step one tomorrow, I don't know. That could change. But that's something we, we did in the past and we are still using this model right now. So right now the step are uh, not flexible if you want to change the step of self deployment you can't do it right now uh, but that's something also we can investigate later if, if there is a need of changing the step uh, number okay there are some questions uh, adam does the l2 agent need to be on the same node as a part of particular part of the phone just on the so right that's, now that's for Brent. We can have that as an aside. We don't have to have that now. Yeah, but right now, uh, if you if you deploy Nova Compute on uh, if you deploy the Nova Compute service, it will not include Neutron for you. You have to do it. We don't have the constraint in place. Okay. So it's building the controller. I'm building the compute node is is the most the thing that oh, you need to specify it's, explicitly. It's the same. Yeah, you need to specify for okay, any any cool. role. Yeah. So basically, there's just a list per role. So a role is like compute or controller or Ceph storage or Ceph storage, and you have a list of services. So each of those service templates that Emilian described, which maps through to a puppet profile, um, you know, that's basically you have one item in a list, which is like enable Nova API, and another one which is enable Nova compute, and you have a controller services list and the compute services list. So, you know, as an operator, you need knowledge of which services should go on which roles um, and what the dependencies between them are. So if you need a neutron agent to run on compute nodes, you would need knowledge of that and add it to the list. Right, the, the, the distinction is between the monolithic controller and where we want to go. Uh, I'm not as concerned with the compute node, because compute node I don't think can be broken up any more than than it, than it is now, whereas the controller, the thing that I really want is to be able to have Keystone vary independently of the other services, so that I can upgrade Keystone prior to everything else for, for upgrades. Yeah, so I mean, until we have containers, if you're running Keystone on a controller node, then yeah. that's going to be still quite difficult. I mean, if you wanted to dedicate one node just for Keystone, you could do that. Once you've got custom roles, and um, the composable services stuff that's already landed, you know, that will be possible. Um, you would basically define a Keystone controller role and it, then just just deploy the services you need um, to run Keystone on it. Um, right, but I see that we have an, a, an Apache role. I'm assuming that's because both Horizon and Keystone run in Apache and it's easier to keep them together. Can we not do that? Yes, yeah, so, so we don't have, um, we have a, a Keystone profile. And so that maps through to a Keystone service pro service template. All you would do is basically add um, OS triple O um, services Keystone to the list plus the other services that it needs. So I don't think that you would need to specify Apache explicitly. That will automatically get pulled in by a puppet. I suggest we have a in heat side, I guess. Yeah, I mean, um, probably, Adam, it might be handy to sort of follow up with like an etherpad or a mailing list thread where you describe the use case in a bit more detail. Okay. Um, sure. I, I know the, the other day I sent you an email showing you how to run just Keystone on a controller uh, all in one. Um, this is kind of going the other direction where you want just Keystone on a single role and then everything yeah. else separated. We're pretty close to making that possible. We need custom roles to land before it, so it's going right. to be easy. Right, no, I, I was assuming with the custom roles. Yeah, after that lands, it should be possible. Cool. Okay, we are reaching the, the, the deadline, the time. 
I would like to thank you for your time and for your questions. Uh, I hope uh, you learned something today. Uh, and uh, feel free to join me by email or IRC if you have more questions. Uh, the slides are public. I see a lot of people connecting on the slides, so I'm sure it works. Uh, go ahead and share it, and, and if you want the source, let me know. And yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot, Emilia. Thanks, man. That was great. Thanks, Emilia.